Melvin from Property Lim Brothers. Can I get your honest opinion on the home seller saga? Under the ethical code of conduct, it's not allowed. Isn't the agent useless? I don't think that any agent, right, could mm. have represented my own house better than me. Oh, it definitely could have told me. Why would we say, the <laughs> one in, the one not in? Spicy news in the real estate industry. Ooh. Have you all heard of a company called Home Seller? No. No, but I guess they sell homes. Yes, nice. similar to our guest for today, hey. who is Melvin from Property Lim Brothers, Singapore's hey. number one biggest property real estate company. Never yes, seen yes, yes. Oh. Sell so famous on it. Yes, yes, yes. Number one on YouTube for yeah. real estate house tours. Pioneer. Uh, yeah, pioneer. pioneer. That's true, that's true. So Melvin is here to help us understand more about the real estate industry in Singapore, as well as what's going on with this whole home seller saga, especially on TikTok and all no. that. So if I can briefly run everyone through what is happening. Essentially, if you've ever tried to buy or sell a home, you will know that your agent most likely will take about a 2% commission from the sale of the house. So- Wrong with you, correct? He's oh, yeah. oh, okay. Average, yeah. average. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Industry standard, okay. Mm. Okay, so home seller is, currently being called a market disruptor in the industry because they are introducing, sorry, not introducing, they are popularizing this flat fee structure okay. where they're selling, sorry, where they're taking 1999 for the sale of a HDB and about 4,000 for the sale of a condo. So not percentage base. Not well, percentage not base. And they, based on their numbers, like the example that they gave is that you can save about 20K when it comes to the sale of your house. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So okay. property agents have come forward and the braver ones like, have come <laughs> forward and said that this is a very spoil market move because uh. everybody's doing this and then now suddenly there's somebody offering $1 haircut, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then there is a bit of debate going on about is there actually value to hiring a property agent or are they just a glorified middleman? No offense. Mm. Or. This is why I see here. Uh, I'm the bouncer. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks, or, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or what is the actual value that real estate agents still have in the current market and industry? Right. Yeah. So. Before we get into the whole saga, let's get to know Melvin a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we put the saga out there first. Now we put a club down, we say, well, you need to talk about himself and his family now. That's the teaser for the audience. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So, as in, I think most of people would have known from maybe your website or a few of the interviews that you have done is that you and Adrian, who is the other property limb brother, who is not actually your real brother. Hey, that was shocking to me, that by That was way. shocking to me, but I guess but you both limbs, are bros. <laughs> both limbs, but yeah, when you go okay. to the About Us page, right, the story, they met at uh, while working in prison. So I was like, right. man, what do you mean? So most people would have known that you are met while training for as prison officers. Mm. So how did you go from <laughs> that to starting a company together? Yeah, so um, that was about 17 years ago already. Mm. So we started uh, coming to the real estate industry in 07. Mm. Yeah, like really old soul. Uh. It just feel like old. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You still look young. Yeah, old yeah, yeah, you look young. Okay, you guys look, look awesome yeah. young. Okay, uh, <laughs> old, old seven. Uh, we were colleagues for about three years, uh, prison officer. We, we met during the training camp, actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we got posted into the same institution, uh, became prison officers. Then for about three years, once we finished the bond, then uh, I chanced upon a friend who was doing real estate, came into the industry. Then I chose Adrian to come together. Mm. And then from there, we have became like a two man partner mm. yeah, as, as salesperson. So um, it's about a 17 year journey so far, 07 to, until today. And uh, that wow. was how we got started. Yeah. Can I ask what, how do you and Adrian split the work? Because I think we see mm. you a lot more on socials and on interviews and all that, right? But so what, what is he doing? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a two man partnership. Uh, we're doing sales together, go for viewings, meet clients, help our clients transact. Yeah, mm. you each do your own sales like, basically. Um, yeah, but we, we have our own office. Mm. Then okay. uh, what happened was that in 2016 December, um, we decided to kickstart like a first home tour with a human inside the video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Because b before that actually, there were already like videos, uh, but it's more like panning shots, yeah. some mm. music, some voiceover. Then we realized that, hey, you know, like, what is it that in Australia, New Zealand, US, you know, the homes looks beautiful. People present and then we started uh, 1 6 December and then in 2018, we started like a, a media team. And mm. that was how we grow from there. So now uh, I assume the role of uh, CEO. I take care of uh, the media side 
also do training for the royalty side. Uh, Adrian basically lead the team on the ground to um, so-called meet clients for consultation. So you are like OCS, he's SCS. OCS, SCS. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, look at you. Yes, yeah, yeah, I mean. And restaurants. <laughs> so like there was, there was a 10 year gap from when you started property to like starting Property Limb Brothers, right? Or like yes. the, the videos essentially. Yes, yes. What was that like impact like when you first put out the videos? Was there like suddenly a massive boost in like revenue? Oh, so um, it was it was mainly just like a, a try try it out kind of idea yeah. So we, I still remember like when I was sharing with my like HGB seller, like hey, um, later we're gonna film a video. They was like, oh, what is this? What is going on? It's <laughs> yeah. like they were like shock, like you know why why are you filming a video and why are you talking inside the video? Mm. Uh, so we just launched it basically like we started a new Facebook page, just launch it, run some ads, do some Joe targeting, mm. and then it was sold within a month. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. And then the buyer uh, that came said that she was shopping at a shopping center nearby, saw the app pop up, call us, view, and then made an offer. Right. So we were pretty shocked about, you know, like digital marketing, content positioning. Mm. And then uh, of course, from there, we started a couple more videos. It worked. Um, and that was how like gradually we believe that this is, yeah. And then when you came to like filming that first video, mm. that first hosted video, what was it like? Because like you said, like firstly, you weren't trained to become a realtor. Now you obviously weren't trained to be like a host or a presenter. Yeah, yeah. Super awkward lah. I felt, I felt super awkward. Last time you used let's be yeah, honest. Very yeah, very jealous. You improve a lot like, over the years. It's like, it's like, I feel like it was like very shy. I speak so softly and then like I had a script. That was just trying to like, it's super awkward lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in fact, I think like the first 50 to 100 videos was super awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm so proud of you now. <laughs> but when I first saw your video, I made cringe for you. So. <laughs> you sounded like a Mindef guy. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, when oh. they interview the Mindef people, then they always like, oh, damn yeah. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but the Mindef guy, you kind of understand, he didn't sign up for this. But it's like, yeah. you clearly sign up for this. Yeah, but it's yeah. like, you needed that first 50 videos to get to, yeah. to where you are. You know, yeah, then like, there was, a, I remember there was one day that I would tell myself, I, uh, I would just like hack the script. Uh. It's like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. just say that, okay, I'll just do all the research. Mm. Then I start to think about the days that I was using my map in uni. Just use my map. Then I just don't look at the script. Mm, yeah, wow. I just, I, I try to imagine like I'm talking to a real human being. Yeah. So that was like the turning point. And then like, it became like more natural. Mm. Then of course like that evolved until today. But it's, yeah, don't, don't, just, don't, just don't play the old videos. <laughs> <laughs> so funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> She was looking at all your old videos just now. No, but it was so interesting to see the, the evolution. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I yeah. think like your oldest video was like a, almost like a slideshow of like photos. Yes, yes, then yes, after yes, the yes, first yes, hosted yes. one was like, oh wow, okay. Yes, you yes. can see like maybe this took a few takes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and the thumbnail <laughs> optimization as well. Oh, damn sorry. <laughs> oh, slowly, slowly, damn sorry. Three million dollar lender. <laughs> Now that we've had some fun, back to the serious topic. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Can I get your honest opinion on the home seller saga first? I'm, I'm not exactly sure why is it a saga. Yeah, but I think that uh, why it is, of course, like now the hot topic is because uh, there was a lot of use of like social media, TikTok, right? Mm. Because when I started 17 years ago, um, there's already existence of uh, discount brokerage model. Yeah. Right. Okay. So so like 17, 17 years ago, there sorry, will be real, oh sorry, <laughs> there'll be realtors that um market their services for maybe like A8 or maybe right. like okay. one, one two A8. So the model's not new. The model is not yeah. new. Um probably this is because um highlighted this so I think probably this is highlighted because of the fact that um CEA, which is the Council of Estate Agents, they are very focused to ensure that there's a professional image um, governing realtors la, in right. the market. So they want to ensure that um, realtors don't talk about each other mm. on a public platform. Mm. Oh. Right. Yeah, mm. it's, it's not so much about your business model because right. your business model, I think they're fine because there's, there's Fair Competition Act. Uh, you're free to charge how much you want. Mm. You want to charge 5%, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You want to charge $10, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But is whether can you get customers and can you survive? It's a little bit like airlines. Yeah, you can pay a fee for first class, business class, but consumers will ask, okay, but what's the value? Mm. Yeah. Uh, you can sit a budget airline, consumers will know that there is definitely- What the trade-offs are. La. Yeah, there are mm. trade-offs. We do a lot of internal trainings at, at PLB. So that we have this like mantra. La. I told my guys that uh, whatever content we created, 
mm. or whatever content you guys are going to create. It can be your own content, short form content on PLB channel, whatever it is. Uh, we don't talk about our competitors. Mm. Yeah, that, that is like the, the, the mantra that we have. Mm. The reason is because we want to follow um, this very good value that Amazon have is that we always want to look at what the customer wants. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I, I think our, our mental energy has to be very clear on which direction we want to focus. So if we want to focus on customers, then we'll continue to think about what they want, then we innovate. Yeah. So then let's just dive in into that value, right? Like mm. help us understand what is the additional value that is brought by non-discount or like non-fixed fare, like property agents. Yeah, so um, over the years since the past, the usual invisible norm has been about Maybe like if you want to sell a home, it's, it's 2%, yep. right? Uh, that's the invisible norm. But of course, homeowners through time, they will want to see more value. Like mm. what will you be doing for 2%, mm. right? <laughs> like firstly, uh, in terms of marketing, what will you be doing? In terms of your advice, what will you be doing? Are you able to lead me from start to finish? Timeline, financial calculation. Can you ensure for me that there's a level of certainty mm. that your campaign can work? Yeah. Uh, what is the network? Yeah, do you have a network of buyers? Do you have exposure online? And of course, can you help me to purchase my next home and mm. make, make a good decision, right? Uh, in Singapore, if you buy a property through a broker, you don't have to pay a fee. Okay. Um, of course, the, the, the arrangement in the market is that the buyer consultant will get a co-book referral fee from the seller consultant, yep. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's like a co-broking arrangement. Mm. So um, of course, because of this over the years, some sellers will maybe say that, oh, I don't want to pay the 2%, I only want to pay 1%, okay. right? Or maybe say, I want to have multiple agents. So I think the main problem now is not, I mean, like you said, this structure has kind of existed over the years, right? But I think now with, you know, with social media and a lot of young people like realizing that they can do this on their own, HDB even made their own resale flat portal and all this, right? Then people are wondering, why am I paying so much money for someone to do things that I think I myself can do? Mm. So um, I think there's two parts to this real estate business. Mm. Yeah, one is um, some realtors they will specialize as what we call the listing agent. That means they are like very good in selling. Mm. Some are very good in really serving the buyers. Like they can really give solid advice, what mm. to buy, what mistakes to avoid, pitfalls, guide them start to finish. Um, so if we talk about the selling portion, basically I think that. Um, the selling portion in Singapore is still very strong in the sense that um, a lot of homeowners, they want to really save time. Uh, most of the time they want to save time. They want certainty. Yep. They want to make sure that they don't make any mistakes. They want to tap on the network of the realtor. Mm. At the same time, I think this has evolved through social media, right? So if let's say the realtor is not evolving to really be a person of like influence, mm. then uh, what's going to happen is that natural disruption will happen. So I think really for the realtors to to be somebody that can really add tremendous value is that they, they perhaps will have to really display their knowledge in terms of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, they must know the in and out. They must become almost like a polymath lah, in the sense mm. that they can they can present they can speak they can they can sell they can really bring out the pros and cons they can compare as well so i think homeowners are trying to look at are you able to position my property on top of the competition around me in the same project or in the same vicinity so one of in the video that i watched they talk one of the first people that were interviewed mentioned that oh agents will help you do this thing called staging, mm. which is essentially make your house look nice and mm. <laughs> look very a, a lot more welcoming. La. So <laughs> what is the difference? Does a house that is staged really sell a lot easier than a house if say, you know, I just tass out, I just clean up, yes. and make sure it looks presentable. Ma. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So there, there Huge was- Huge difference. <laughs> first high chance I will renovate the house. Right? Okay. If I move so in. when we started uh, 10 over years ago, all the old birds would tell me, uh, in Hokkien, uh, Kang to Jin Ho Boy. That means like- Empty house is easier to sell. Empty house is easier to sell. But actually the latest research is a, is a contrary to that. Basically ah. homes that are vacant, they look smaller. Mm. Yeah. yeah, once you put in the correct furniture, you, correct placement, it actually enlarges in terms yep. of your spatial kind of view. Yeah. It's like, because buying a home is both emotional yeah. plus 
you want to make sense of the numbers. Yeah. But usually most of the time, if it's buying for your own sake, you walk in, you want to feel good first. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Then after that, you're going to do research on the bank valuation, the numbers and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, so you will, you will combine these two emotional <laughs> plus facts together. Mm. Yeah, so, so, so that's the key difference. So actually when we started, uh, we attracted a lot of homeowners with homes that are very difficult to sell. For example, level two, Mm. Homes that are facing the rubbish chute. Uh, uh, facing. Homes facing expressways. Yeah. Uh, homes that uh, were not done up, like because we, we do home staging at the start. Yeah. Uh, or maybe like landed properties that have very long driveway facing substation. Mm. Then once we reposition the home using the home tour, we realize that when buyers actually come for the physical viewing, most of the time they already know about our problems. Mm. Right? And they still want to come. Mm. So actually the buyers actually told us that mm. you don't waste my time, mm. but because of the price and all these features, I still want to come and have a physical look. Mm. Yeah. yeah, And then it actually says- How do you pad it though? So you face the rubbish chute plus the highway behind, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so one side face rubbish chute. <laughs> second floor. <laughs> <laughs> one side face rubbish chute, the other side is highway, right? Then yeah. how, how do you position it in your video? Okay. Do so, you say like, even though it's shit, it was selling <laughs> cheap. <or whatever. laughs> okay. So, so um, there's two phenomena that we, we realized over the years. La. Then I come back to the question. Number one is that we realized that actually now the home tour is the first viewing. Uh, yeah. The second viewing is the actual physical yeah. viewing. Yeah. Okay, second phenomen phenomenon is that um, we realized that over the years when we meet clients, they will always say that, oh, uh, I've been trying to sell for six to 12 months, cannot sell. Sometimes the buyer come to the main gate don't want to come in because they, they feel Fuck. they feel cheated. <gasps> yeah, like oh. they will say that, hey, why didn't your realtor tell me that it's facing a substation? Last time, the older method is 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 that let the buyer come first, then yeah. you convince them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh. But now with information and social media, everybody don't want to waste time. They want to save time. Yeah. Yeah. So they want to feel respected. So we have done a lot of case studies. For example, there's this landed uh, at West Coast. Oh, in the already front. minus price anyway. <laughs> 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 then you must be an East person. <laughs> okay, in front is basically a substation. There's a there's an artery road beside. There's a, it's, it's pretty heavy traffic, mm -hmm. but uh, they've been trying to exit for probably about 12 to 24 months, cannot oh. sell. We also took us six months to sell, but at the start of the video, within the first two minutes, we straight away walk on, this, on the road. Yeah, mm. just share everybody, the surrounding, what it looks like. Then we went through like an educational home tour. Talk about is the myth of a substation really true? Like, re does it really emit like harmful radiation and stuff like that? Then we talk about uh, how to really like uh, have your own gardening to just block off a little bit more road noise, maybe like good mm. windows, um, sound blocking windows. So we, we offer solutions, mm. right. but we don't want to hide the problem. Yeah, right. Right. yeah, because the problem is already there. These are inherent factors you cannot change. Why don't we just think about solutions and whether you can accept or cannot accept. Right. Yeah. I think the good thing also about putting out out front is that you almost filtered the buyers who don't mind these like yeah. problems to begin yeah. with also. Okay, so I think another one of the bigger differences that people mention when talking about uh, home seller versus other property agents is that home seller does this thing called like self-viewing. Mm. So the homeowner own self will open the door then the client will come Ooh, in and That's what I did. That. Yeah. So, People are saying that honestly, whenever I go and see someone's house, most of the time it's the homeowner that is doing the selling anyway because they know the house best. Ma. So in this sense, isn't the agent useless? Mm. So I, I think that uh, for realtors to really, to continue to add value, I think they, they have to be there. Yeah, mm. it's just like example, if you go to a car showroom, but they ask you to like, just self view or test drive yeah. yourself. But I think in the history of selling, mm. when we come to the escalation of product category, the higher that the, the product goes in terms of pricing, yeah. the influence of the salesperson is actually technically higher. Right. Yeah, because if, if the salesperson can really articulate like uh, what are the pros and cons, uh, how does it make sense for you and really give like very solid advice plus comparison of pricing, mm. comparison of like the layout, comparison of the location and talk really about how to solve certain problems in a home. Mm -hmm. They can really add a lot of value. So, so let's say the feeling is that you visit a home, maybe at 8 p.m. It's vacant. You just tour one round and then you go off and you text the agent say, I finished viewing. But let's say for example, the experience is that you go at 8 p.m. The realtor is there, prep up the unit. Lights are on, aircons are on, music is on. The home smells good. Uh, everything is well prepped. That's and what then, I did for my house. And then it's like, 
really like welcoming the the buyer to the yeah, home, like yeah. and sharing with them, you know, um, oh my, my client is actually like moving to a bigger place. They're looking for family to take over this home, oh, and wow. um, they're freezing alone. Yeah, yeah. and his voice changed. <laughs> yeah, to match the music. <laughs> and of course, like this home has has been a home <laughs> that, 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 that helped them to build their memories with their kids, and uh, they just want to find the next family. Hey, where's this place? This yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. so oh, it's like it's like selling patek <laughs> <feeling, right? laughs> generation. Yeah, now. yeah the, the feeling is different. Yeah, like, and allow me to share with you that like, in this neighborhood now, there are eight other units for sale. Uh, this unit is not priced at this price. Let me explain to you the key difference. Oh, that uh, unit basically asking at this price, but it's slightly smaller. The rooms are a little bit smaller, but not saying that it's not, no good, but perhaps if you need a bigger bedroom, this might be suitable for you. Mm. This is a location, this only takes like three minutes walk, but you don't have to cross the road. Your, your kids can feel safe, you know? Mm. Like, yeah. So I think a lot of these differences can be influenced uh, and really like these are pure value to be added to the yeah. buyer because the buyer might not know this yeah. and they might miss out on a good home. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So if um, also when we look at another spectrum, sometimes when homeowners do your own viewing, it's sometimes a little bit awkward. Okay, I have sold homes for agents before. Oh, okay. It's like agents employ us to sell their home because oh. they feel awkward selling their own home. Oh. Yeah. It's a uh, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're laughing. Okay, it's like because and of course the agents want to focus on their own business. Mm. Right? They so so they'll feel like, okay, if I invest this four hours every weekend at home to show my own home, it's not fair for my clients that Oh, okay. I'm representing them. Oh, yeah. okay. So they want to be fair to their clients also. So yeah. they actually employ us to, <laughs> yeah. to market for them wow. as like a client basis. Mm. Like. So sometimes it can also be a little bit awkward because example, if you walk into <laughs> a home and a seller is promoting their own home, mm. sometimes the feeling as a buyer is a little bit different. As it's it's like, like you're just trying to awkward say la. anything awkward to get la. me. I, I have to deal with your lion because I don't want to hurt your feelings. La. So I must hear you. Na, 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 ah, like I cannot ask serious hard questions. Yeah, mm. yeah I cannot ask like, why are you selling? Uh, mm. I cannot ask like, why are you moving? Like, is there any problem with this home? Yeah. Did yeah. anyone pass away in this home? I cannot ask all these mm. questions yeah. because I need to respect the owner. And also the, the natural mindset is that you as the owner, you think you're going to be So sometimes it's a little bit yeah. awkward. But the mm. agent also, what? in that sense, the agent also want to sell. What? So the agent also will. Uh, so for me, I, I felt like I, my, my sister was my agent. Hey, Melvin didn't pay to come here. So I'm plugging my sister instead. <laughs> <laughs> So 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 my my, my sister so uh helped me sell my house, mm. but I just nice when the viewing happened, mm -hmm. she was overseas and she wanted to postpone. I said no no, I'm gonna sell it myself, right? Wow. And, and you sold it. We sold it. We sold it on second viewing, I think. To the to that buyer la, that came. Yeah. Wow. No, honestly, I I don't think that any agent right could mm. have represented my own house better than me. Yeah, because yeah. it's not just like when, when you talked about it, right? We also synced up the music. We light the candles and we mood light the whole house and then we lay magazine on the table, that kind of stuff. And we didn't just sell our house, eh, we sell Bongo. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> we thought about that's where the best food are. This one, this one, this one. This is where we go out date But nice. that's your USP. Really, yeah. so. no, and then we go into our history also. Yeah, yeah. That it was within this house that I built my business. Mm. And now we're going to upgrade. Yeah. So, oh, like, so feng shui good, feng shui good, but I never actually said <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know jack about feng shui ma. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. like, I feel like no one could have sold it better than me. But where, where I see the, the value in, right, is in the buying. Because when I have set a budget and I kind of know where I want to live, right, I, I look at the first house, I'm like, okay. Like I've got a very tiring one. Eh. <laughs> Home viewing is so tiring. And I think I'm very scared from office viewing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, even yeah, yeah. before <laughs> I've scouted my own first home for myself, I've scouted multiple offices from my first office. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I know how bloody draining it is, right? So the moment I go inside, right? Then I'm like, bright and airy, See, within okay. budget, done, you know? Yeah. And so the buying angel <laughs> is, is, is my sister, right? It's like, ah, this one is like, this one is like, like, but that doesn't really feel like a problem to me, you know? Cause I very chin chai. Right. Cause like, I just kind of want to move la. I just, I want to get another house. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited for it. Yeah. And the buying agent is so important in telling you that this garbage shoot thing, this rubbish shoot that you can see adjacent uh, doesn't affect you, but it's gonna affect when you try and sell this house. Yeah, and, and so <sighs> stuff like that, a buying agent helped me look at what a selling person and selling agent will tell their customers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so then some of my sister, ma, so she's not gonna sell kid me, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and she didn't want to take commission, but I, I felt like she did such a great job that I wanted her to take mm. the commission, yeah. So. I think it's very, very important. Eh? Like, I don't think I could have done it without an agent. Maybe with the exception of selling and presenting my own house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but even beyond that, I think after viewing two, three house, right, we were so tired. We're thinking, why don't we just live here? Like, wow, the mortgage is so comfortable, you know? Yeah. Then if my sister didn't go out there and just 
least for me, right? I think I would have stopped finding it. Cause it's not, <laughs> not fun. It's not fun at all. You go and intrude other people's house. Then for some reason, everybody I go, there's always a child napping. Always. Mm. The child is napping in the master bedroom, right? Always. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you see, but you must be quiet. My son is still sleeping. Then you go up, the son is not sleeping. <laughs> the son is in a very awkward leg spread position or whatnot. Then you you always think that the fella is some three year old child because he's sleeping in the master. This happened multiple no, times. He's 19. You know what I mean? <laughs> very awkward one. The whole thing very awkward one. Or you say my child, you just think that maybe he's a boy. But no, it's a girl wearing a pajamas. She's 17. Then it's like, it's just awkward for everybody involved. <laughs> So I hated viewing houses. Actually. It was not fun at all. They already tried to store them away in the master. Uh, yeah. so no They're like this very not presentable child. <laughs> Okay, so I think we've kind of addressed the assumption that property agents just, you know, arrange viewings, then they just make the easy money from so the So much more than that. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell me like, what does the day-to-day -day of an agent really look like? A mm. realtor, yeah. I believe realtor. the language. Realtor. Yeah. Thank you. Realtor. Yeah. Um, I think like uh, it has it has also evolved over the last like ten over years. Is like so mm. these are the four spectrums: uh. hunting for homes, marketing for homes, and then at the same time getting new business, meeting clients, doing pitching, setting paperwork. So that was in the past. Now I think realtors have to wear a lot of hats. Yeah. So of course I talk about like polymath, right? They have to be able to to talk in front of camera, yeah. present, create content. Um, and when we look at it, it's actually quite similar to how a business is being run. It's just that now it's being done by a single solopreneur. Yeah, okay. so all the way from lead gen, how do you like create your own lead funnel? How do you create content? If you want to do webinars, you want to create short form, long form videos and stuff like that. Then secondly, you have to go for pitching, mm. uh, consultation, meeting clients. Uh, when you're day to day in the office, how do you do research for the properties that you just sort of like signed? Like mm. somebody bestowed the property to you for three months to sell for them. You have to do research. Mm. Then after that, you have to create content for those listings as well. And then at the same time, some of the <laughs> sellers, you have sold already, but you need to help them to buy, yeah. right? Ah. You do like in principle approval checks for the bank, make sure their financials are good, uh, guide them for, for the, the whole process, um, look at listings, call, co oh. agents to arrange for viewing appointments. Right. Mm. Weekend. Then at the very last minute, they change agent, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then of course, uh, bring them for viewings. Then at the same time, you have to conduct viewings for the listings that you're marketing. So you're wearing both hats, like serving sellers and buyers. Oh and then of course, God. transactions, problem solving towards the end as well. Yeah. So I would say that the life uh, that they have in terms of like family, kids, business, gets very anxious once they are about 30 plus, 40 plus, mm. it, when their kids are growing up because they cannot spend time with their kids on the weekend. Mm. Then when they want to have family dinner, this is a very usual thing like, that really, um, like when we coach realtors, they will say like, this is their usual dilemma. It's like, they cannot stop looking at the phone. Yeah. Mm. Because like yeah. even a meal with their friends or family, it's like once the phone ring, they say, hey, social I need to pick up because there could be an offer coming. And most offers come during nighttime and weekends. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's the time you have family dinners. So they get very anxious. Because <laughs> the clients are discussing <laughs> over family dinners. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And a lot of the closing takes place late into the night. Yeah. Because people want to make a decision before the night ends. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh. Mm. Yeah. And many people join the realtor industry because they think they want to have control of their own time. La. Yes. But then once they join, they realize that if you want to have longevity, you want to have a consistent business, actually it's not that easy. Yeah. yeah mm. Instead of having one boss, you now have 500 boss, la, which is your clients. La. Yes. Correct. How, how yeah, did you and right. your family deal with that? Like, especially during the heat of it? Because as yeah. you say, it took a toll. It definitely took a toll on you. It took, sure. me, it took me many years. La. It's like my wife always say, your soul is not there. there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it took me many years to learn like how to time block, mm. how to be more disciplined, uh, have a, like a time block with my wife, like date nights and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, it mm. took me many, many years, probably about 10 odd years. It's oh. only in the last few years that I like got more sanity. Okay. But it, what, what you have in the time block is also a luxury of your success, ma, correct? What would you advise a new agent today that mm. don't have your, haven't reached your level yet to time block? Mm. Right. Um, would you, could you have done anything differently to ensure that you had, you didn't affect your marriage back then? Not that your marriage has problems now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would still advise them to time block. Like, in fact, that's what we do for our realtors now. Oh. Right. Like we told them like, take Wednesday off as like your Sabbath. Yeah, because mm. you already don't have Saturday, Sunday off. Try to set one family dinner, one date night with a wife per week. Then at least your life has like consistency. Right. Because I, I shared them example, if your dinner with a wife is two hours, just imagine now you're really fall sick, you're in A&E, mm. two hours you never pick up a phone, mm. the world is not going to end. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's the same logic. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I believe if you call back your client, two hours later, they will understand. 
Mm. What are some tips that you have for buyers when they go and view a house? Mm. Ooh, things to look like out what for. are commonly overlooked areas? Because just now you mentioned that realtors actually help clients avoid a lot of these mistakes, right? Mm. So what are some of these tips that you can give up for free? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so I think it really depends whether you are like purchasing a HDB apartment or a condo, condo. or landed. Sure. Okay, but some key things is, okay, firstly, uh, make sure that your finances are already done, mm. you're, you're ready. If you're buying a HDB, you have to take note that uh, sometimes there's COV involved. Mm. Right, cash flow valuation. If you're buying private property, sometimes there's also COV involved. For example, if the asking price is two million, mm. and uh, let's say you want to make an offer, but you check with a banker, valuation is only one point seven. If you offer at two million, it means that you have to top up three hundred thousand in cash. Oh, yeah, you can't get a loan for that. Like. Yeah, you can't get right. a loan for Understood. that. Understood. Yeah, so you have to take note of this first component. Second component is, of course, uh, you need to, of course, ask about like. Uh, certain key important things like example, why are the owners selling? Mm. Yeah, uh, you can ask sensitive questions if you want to. Yeah, what Be- is considered sensitive? Like example, anybody pass away in the house? Oh, yeah, you okay. can ask sensitive mm. questions if you want to. Provided uh, it depends whether you're comfortable or not comfortable. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, secondly, I think the facing is very important because things that you cannot change, you must take note. Mm. That means the direction you cannot change. Right. The sun facing you cannot change. Yep. The, the sound, the noise level you cannot change. Mm. Within the house, anything that you can change and value add, that's fine. Provided you're willing to invest for renovation. But mm. things that you cannot change, your neighbors, uh, the environment. Uh, Neighbor can change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 wow. <laughs> Make life so difficult for them. At home. <laughs> Yeah, so things that you cannot change, I think you have to really do your homework. Right. Yeah, mm, things okay. that you can change, I think that's fine. Right. Mm. Yeah. I, I got one pro tip also. Okay. Yeah. Make a reason, right, to go to the MCST, the office. What is MCST? The building management. If, if, it, if you're buying a condo, for example. So I I, I don't know why uh-huh. I, I coincidentally had to go to the MCST for a few, for okay. two of the, one of which I bought, okay. which is my current house. And then when I went there, right, because they always got a notice board. It's always very small, man. They always cover on a small little spot for that poor property manager yeah. to sit on there, right? And and they always have to flag out all the, the cracks la, or leakage oh, all that, right? It's yeah, usually yeah. on their bulletin board. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I went yeah. to two or three, and even including my sister's one, they all have this little bulletin board where they flash out all the, the problems. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So go in there and just look at the bulletin board. Interesting. Because some of it is just noise. Like look at the notice also. Because yeah. the notice sometimes is for excessive barking. Sure. You right. can deal with that, right? right. Um, but got some is the wall side crack. Like building exterior wall crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, you yeah. can see their maintenance work there. Then you're like, Ooh, where else crack? Yeah, okay, that's yeah, not bad. So I, the, I thought that was good. The other thing actually reminded me because I, I used to live in a condo and this was like the previous like management, right? It's good to actually visit office because you want to know whether the building manager is there or not. They're supposed to be there in the office, but there was one period of time where I had a leakage problem, right? And every time I go to the, to the office, yeah, 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 nobody yeah, yeah. there, even during their working hours. Oh. So actually quite-, quite Mine important. actually fired hours and we changed. Huh. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and, and, and effects of all the property. Like, I mean like, what is the maintenance fee? Right. Uh, is that a healthy sinking fund if it's a condo? What is uh, How yeah. do you know what's a healthy sinking fund? Though? Oh, I mean, like you, you can check the report. Like, is it sinking yeah, I, fund? I have it. it. I don't know. There's millions in there. Then, like, mm, go oh, on. Oh, that's good. good. That's good. I mean, <laughs> millions. Okay, because sometimes if the sinking fund is depleting, then maybe when it comes for the next change or repainting, everybody have to top up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. But we have no sense of how much it is to paint, ma, you know? Yeah. So, roughly, I think it has to be, depending on the size of a condo, if the figure is somewhat healthy, la, Right. Yeah, I think that, I think it's okay. Who is leaving this? Where's this fund coming from? <laughs> oh, it, it comes from your monthly maintenance fee. Oh, yeah, so it's like two hundred, three hundred. Oh, it's like cast fund. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a kitty yeah. okay. Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, people always say like, oh, property agent must like drive a nice car, then they must wear all the branded thing, right? Do you think this kind of thing still matters? This is what I deem like, in the world of marketing as a uh, peacock theory. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but I think it really depends on what is the the business model that yeah. the realtor wants to deploy. La. For mm. example, if let's say uh, he or she is thinking about doing recruitment, right? Then maybe by deploying Peacock Theory, it does attract a certain group of realtors that aspire to be like right. him yeah. or her. Yeah. Right. Not saying that it's right or wrong. It's just a matter of a business model, la, mm. right? Yeah. Of course, there are also a lot of uh, maybe like veteran team leaders who don't deploy peacock theory. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They use like really training, mm. good value mm. and, and stuff like that. So I think it's a matter of business model. But yeah. I think when we look at the viewpoint of a consumer, 
a home seller and buyer. Uh, to me, based on marketing, I feel that the peacock theory don't really add value to the consumer. Yeah. Uh, because the consumer, when they are looking at the content that you created, they are more looking about how can you help me or what's in it for me. Yeah. But not about like your car or your watch and stuff like that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I remember reading that like you you don't have like a Rolex, your car is like secondhand. Instead of buying an expensive car, you bought cars for your whole family instead. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. so I think it's it's such an inspirational way of looking at things. <laughs> I was just saying we have so much in common and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then you bought a car for the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is a rumor that I would like you to okay maybe oh. debunk or if there's some truth to it because I mean there's bad apples in every industry right mm. so I want yep. to know the truth from your experience. Mm. They, there's this rumor that agents will create fake bidding wars right in order to drive up the price of a property. Uh, of course, on under the ethical code of conduct, it's not allowed. Mm. Uh, but of course, I believe uh, yes, maybe that there, there are uh, things that are happening like in the industry. So, am I able to identify when? when such a thing is happening or not? Uh, as, a, as a buyer point of view. Yes. I think that, um, so for example, let's say if you, if you go for a viewing, maybe as a, as a home buyer, you'll be very cautious or you're a little bit afraid that uh, is the seller agent telling me the truth, mm. right? Like example, when they say there's a last offer, is, mm. is it really true? Mm. Uh, when they say that someone is making an offer uh, an hour ago already, is it really mm. true? Mm. Yeah, so I think, uh, the most important as a home buyer is to do your own homework and research. And uh, you can take it as information. And of course, whether is it true or not, I think it's very hard to go and investigate. Okay. And maybe by the time you investigate, the home is already sold already. So I think from the buyer's point of view, to buy a home, uh, have the numbers really like plan out. Right. Yeah, check the past transaction, check the bank valuation first. Uh, really do your due diligence, do your homework, and you can make your own offer. Yeah, you can, you can make an offer that you think is a fair value based on asking price. Mm -hmm. Then you take it from there. Yeah, then, mm -hmm. then you see, mm -hmm. you, you, you can of course ask like, are there any last offers? But you can take it with a either it's true right? or a pinch of salt. Yeah. Mm. Because the mindset is that you will never know whether is it real or not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess from seller POV, this is also where an uh, agent comes in handy, right? Because versus having to do the negotiation on your own and then you're hearing like sob stories from everybody <laughs> trying to drive mm. the price down. You yeah. have somebody that is representing you and helping you stay firm with your pricing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. would you say is the most hot selling district in Singapore right now and mm. the district that is hardest to sell right now? Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, based on transaction volume, mm. uh, it's always like D10 and D15. Which is? Uh, District 10, Bukit Timah, District 15, East Coast. Mm. Like transaction volumes. Mm. Okay, yeah. partly also because the size of that district is big. Yeah. yeah. Then also like there are a lot of good schools within these two districts. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think the district size matters a lot. Mm. Yeah. Um, but things are evolving because actually our government is really smart. They are decentralizing a lot of things like mm. international schools, they're planting it. And mm. all the parameters, mm. hospitals. Mm. New business hubs as well. Yeah, yeah business hub, then integrated shopping mall. So so I think like they're trying to decentralize outwards yeah. to the suburban region. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that hopefully the district thing will Yeah, so, so actually sometimes uh suburban districts in the last few years they see more profit okay. than certain central condos. Because yes. yeah. they, they bought it at lower so la. Yeah. Mm. Then there's more like HDB upgrading families that will upgrade to the condos in the suburban district. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's yeah. actually more audiences. Okay. Yeah. okay. Bongo guys is the place to be. Then the hard to North sell, in general, hard to sell one you cannot say is it? Hard to sell one actually. Um, West Coast. La. If it's hard to sell, Property and Brothers can. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I think every district uh, has very healthy volume. I would categorize. I, I would categorize. <laughs> on, I would, no, no, really. I would categorize hard to sell properties as really like properties with a lot more. I would. Do, I don't want to say bad DNA, but I would say that they fall short on in terms of good inherent characteristics. Yeah. So, for example, like every condo, there's always transactions, but there are certain kind of facing and units that will take longer to sell. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, like every housing estate also will have transactions, but certain uh, so-called like characteristic in terms of facing layout and stuff like that will, will take a long time to sell. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because Singapore is really too small already. It's, it's, mm. it's like- We have to use every space. La. So some people have yeah, to kind of- Yeah, it's really actually. too small. And, and, and there's this recency effect. Like if you grow up in the neighborhood, you tend to want to buy back in the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm. Uh -uh. So, so that's why like even 
you, you just mentioned any estate. Mm. The transaction volume is always there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what are some like red flags, right? That I should look out for when I'm trying to engage a realtor? Mm. I think like uh, consumers are very savvy now, but of course, like example, it depends. Let's say if you're selling a home. Mm. Uh, firstly, I think nowadays home sellers, their expectation is really like a huge spectrum. Number one is that you must be a good marketer. The most sellers now, will expect you to have like a home tour being done for them. Yeah, it's like a bread and butter, la, almost like a bread and butter, uh, provided they are comfortable. Number two is like virtual tours. Like, so all the marketing content, we call it positioning, it has to be done. Secondly, they're also looking, do you have an existing platform? Like, do you have your mm. own channels? Do mm. you have your own audiences? Wow, mm. Very yeah. Python now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, some, started in. <laughs> some owners will ask you to demo. Demo? Like, how are you going to show my home? Oh, oh Rosal oh, role play the oh, during, oh, during, like during, audition. So lose money, uh, right during, from the start. <laughs> <laughs> so during the pitch, maybe they will ask you like, um, are you able to show us how you can show our home? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You need to demo on the spot. Uh, like how, how like so, the pros and cons, oh. you talk about the house and stuff. Because homeowners want to make so sure that- Then after that they say, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Just go. Someone, they, they ask you to go West Coast. Then you like, you, you can't sell that place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then you grow in the east side your whole life. You know east side is the best side. Then you yeah, we will discount a hundred thousand on the price. <laughs> I'm curious, like, do every seller that come to you have a video? Like, do you create a video for all? Ninety-eight percent. Okay. Uh, Two percent is because maybe they some of the clients uh tenanted their unit. Tenants are not comfortable. Right. Mm. Or maybe some sellers are really out of privacy reason they don't want to show. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Okay. Okay. You mentioned also about like you didn't receive much training when you first started. And mm. now you have so many consultants essentially under you. So like what training do you like, go, like do they go through essentially? Oh, so um, once they come in, of course, like we have this at like, three months BMT. Uh, be like three, <laughs> yeah, a little BMT. Um, most <laughs> of it are training based on like knowledge um, about what to say, uh, real facts on the ground, mm. how to look at different types of properties, uh, timeline planning, financial calculation. Okay. At the same time, we also have this like home tour showmanship training. Oh, so on camera yeah. training oh, so as well. Wow. Yeah, then <coughs> we'll train uh, like how to speak on camera. It's like a whole like Stephen Lim experience the whole day. <laughs> 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 So if I want wow. to go for a property Lim brother, must I be good in front of camera? Okay, so uh, we have this uh, interview process. Actually, the, the, the first round is uh, for them to send in like a video clip. Multiple no, wow. rounds. <laughs> wow. This, if I want to join the real estate industry, right? Wow. And then you maybe send a video clip, I'm not like, Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so okay, okay, now we know the standard. Yes, right? yeah. Okay, so what's so, so, your agents so good looking? So, so we have a list of questions. Uh, they have to self, uh, do an introduction. Uh, then after that, uh, come for a recruitment Which seminar. Region? Then we have a one-to-one -one interview. Three rounds now. Three rounds. Yeah. Wow, okay, okay. I mean like the video, the video is the first round yeah. of yeah. filtration. Second round is coming for the seminar for them to understand. Mm -hmm. Third round is a one-to-one. -one. Okay. The video already eliminates 70% of the people. Right? Okay. Yeah. Do good looking agents make more money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I've seen a lot of <laughs> realtors that are <laughs> so-called like uh, yeah. average looking. <laughs> Average looking, <laughs> but uh, very, very successful. Yeah, yeah so, got so game, man, they got game. So it's time for our favorite segment, Painting, Painting of, of the, the app. app. So if you don't know already, we are supporting Shaping Hearts, which is an inclusive arts festival by North East CDC to support local artists with disabilities. So this painting is done by- Leong Si Jun, and he has been diagnosed with Down syndrome. So this painting is actually called Galaxy mm. and it depicts a mesmerizing galaxy rendered in dotted paint. So capturing an ethereal beauty. So what I also see is that it kind of looks like a very uh what's that what's that James Cameron movie? Avatar. Avatar. Avatar like landscape with it's this true. sunrise that's okay, coming okay, up. I see, I see. It. Yeah, I think it's, it's, ah, it's very nice for a maximalist home uh, or a minimalist home, for example, for mm. a pop of color. Mm. So if you would like to support or purchase this painting, I'll see you at Shaping Hearts. All of us will be there on 19th October at our Tampanese Hub. So we've come to the end of today's episode. Like, share, subscribe if you've enjoyed. And of course, a big thank you to Melvin for joining Ooh, us and being honest good. with us, I hope. Yeah. So, <laughs> you can let us know if you want to see him back. If you have more burning questions, leave them down in the comments down below. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Have you had to sell your house since starting PLB? And what was the experience like for you with people knowing that you are Melvin from Property Lean Brothers? Oh. They straight away offer. <laughs> <laughs> so when I uh, I also sold my home through one of my 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 associate. Okay. Yeah, so I asked my associate to help me to just. Ah, so you weren't the so one I that focus on the business. Of course. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So also weird lah. 
I wouldn't yeah, want to. Yeah. Yeah. If Melvin so, trying to leave, then like, I'm not good. Right? <laughs> 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 okay, okay. <laughs> it's not like he can't. He's not like he need to sell this to afford the other. He can afford the yeah, other. That's true, that's true. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I got my associate to help me. Okay, yeah. okay. But was it like a selling point? Like, oh, Melvin used to live here. No lah, no lah. Okay, la. okay, okay, yeah, okay. It's just like as per normal. You open the door, it's his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine he has a portrait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dead lion on the floor, and he's holding a rifle. They're all houses behind him. <laughs> <laughs>